Hey everybody, uh, this time out we're tackling a 2008 Honda Element. It's got a customer complaint of an intermittent check engine light. Um, shop that's working on it has replaced the VTAC solenoid and apparently they have done uh, a repair on a ground wire, uh, which we haven't looked at yet. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, going in and scanning it for codes and then uh, we'll see where that takes us. So this is our code scan. You can see we're using the Autel here. Uh, when we went in and scanned it for codes, we got a P2647. Uh, it's permanent and temporary, which means it's uh, an intermittent. And it looks like we have a rocker arm oil pressure switch circuit high voltage code. So the next thing we're going to do is go into the service manual and just see exactly what that code's all about. So when we went in and looked up the code, um, they do give us a brief general description of how the system works. If you take a look at the uh, verbiage here, basically how it works is when the PCM wants to activate the VTEC mechanism, it sends a command out to the VTEC solenoid, which turns the solenoid on, and then it monitors the oil pressure switch for a change of status. Now if the command goes out and there's no change of status or the status is wrong to start with it's going to set this code and I'm going to show you the logic here uh, on the next slide. So here's the switch logic chart that we pulled from the uh, trouble tree. Again it's uh, it could have been a little clearer on this but its operation is pretty straightforward. When the rocker arm control solenoid is commanded off the switch should read off and when the control solenoid is commanded off the switch should read on. So basically the command and the uh, the command from the solenoid and the rocker arm oil pressure switch should never agree with each other. When one is on the other one is off and vice versa. Now we know from experience on these Hondas typically that as you're driving the car somewhere between about 2500 and 3500 rpm the system will make a changeover so our next step here is we're going to drive the car and we're going to accelerate and just to make sure that the switch over is, is going properly we're going to monitor the command and the oil pressure switch and do a couple of um, acceleration runs with it just to make sure that everything is kind of working okay and if it's not we should be able to troubleshoot it from there these are some of the screens from our road test. You can see that as we accelerate beyond about 2400 RPM, the system switches on. As we decelerate back down to idle, it switches back off again. And note that the VTEC solenoid and the oil pressure switch never agree with each other. This is normal operation for this car, so we still haven't uncovered our fault. So up until this point, everything that we've tested uh, appears to be working okay. So what we did was went back to the service manual, trying to get a better description of the code set criteria. So the first thing we came across was this malfunction threshold. And it basically says when the rocker arm oil control solenoid is off, the rocker arm oil pressure switch should remain off. Now, if you'll remember, if the solenoid is off, that means we are in the low lift or the idle position. And uh, according to our chart, if the solenoid is off, the switch should read on. So I think we need to take a closer look at that and see where that takes us. So this is the switch wiring. Now this is pretty simple. It looks like the PCM puts 12 volts on the sense circuit. There is a contact switch inside the oil pressure switch that completes the circuit to ground. So when we're at idle, and the system is turned off, this switch should read on, and it does that by uh, completing the contact. So when we're looking or monitoring the voltage on the sense circuit, which is the circuit that goes back to the PCM, when the switch is off, there should be zero volts on it, and when the switch is on, it should read close to battery voltage. So with that in mind, we're gonna go back out and, and do some testing on the car, and uh, Jordan did the actual testing on the car. He shot a couple of videos and uh, we'll kick over to them right now. 
So we are on the ground side of our VTEC uh, switch. Uh, you can see we have battery voltage on the ground circuit and when we pull on this wire, watch what happens on the voltmeter. It comes and goes, the ground. So there we have a good ground, you move the wire around a little more and it comes, and the, good, and the ground goes away. So I think we have a ground issue underneath here on the ground that they've added, so have a look at that. So we've got the cover out to access the ground that they've added here and um, we've gone and put the lead right at the ground and uh, even then when you move it around you can see the, uh, the ground comes and goes. So I'm thinking we're going to have to take that apart, clean it up and uh, fix the ground up. That should take care of the issue. So we went in and took a closer look at the ground. Uh, we basically had to take their connector apart because we could make the ground come and go by wiggling the ground wire uh, at this connector. And when we took the connector apart, we actually found that it, uh, the end of it where the wire goes in, which should have been sort of a crimp, was actually two pieces. The two pieces were separate, and the only thing that was holding them together uh, was the shrink tube and it was allowing enough flex in there for them to uh, make and break the contact. So the bottom line on this one was all this trouble was caused by a ground uh, because of a bad eyelet connector and the shop had already repaired the ground so they they diagnosed it properly. Uh, they just got a crappy part and uh, that killed their diagnosis. Anyway we were able to figure it out without too much trouble and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll catch you on the next one. If you like this video, please let us know by following us or liking us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And if you want access to more in-depth uh, training videos, please visit our website at www.autoaid.ca. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video.